tonight, progress being made on a new desalination plant for the EP set to bring much needed water security for the region. And why a poor Lincoln woman is riding her bike all the way from Darwin to her hometown. This is Southern Cross News with Abby Donaldson. Good evening. An exciting announcement for the Air Peninsula today with a parcel of land purchased for a future desalination plant. The proposed plant is set to be built at Sleaford Bay and will provide much needed water security for the region. A big step forward in future proofing Air Peninsula's water security. SA Water has confirmed uh, that we are going ahead with the purchase of a parcel of land at Sleaford Bay, uh, just out of Port Lincoln, to accommodate a future desalination plant. And some say planning for the desalination plant has been a long time coming. Uh, it was first mooted in 2002 when the then Labor government promised that Air Peninsula would have a desal plant uh, all those years ago and now here we are in 2018. The proposed plant off Sleaford Bay will be much smaller than the plant in operation south of Adelaide, however will provide a substantial resource for the Air Peninsula. Air Peninsula in the past has used up to about 8 gigalitres per annum. This will add 2 to 3 gigs to that so it'll take pressure off the resource, that resource that we as locals have been so very worried about for such a long time. And construction of the plant may happen sooner than you think. It's very early days, there's a, a lot of consultation to occur with the community, a lot of financial planning to occur uh, centrally with SA Water and the new government. However, uh, I would expect something to occur in the next couple of years. Casey Trelaw, Southern Cross News. A new major mine near Broken Hill is one step closer to taking shape. Carpentaria Resources has secured vital funding for a feasibility study for its Horsens Iron project, which is predicted to bring hundreds of jobs to the region. A big contribution that will go a long way. Carpentaria Resources has announced that Japanese trader Mitsui & Co will contribute $5 million to help fund the feasibility study for its Horsens Iron project. In return, the company will receive 2 million tonnes per annum of the project's super-grade iron ore. They have also contributed $81 million to the mine's construction. Mitsui have stated their reason for getting into Horsens was to meet their customers' increasing demand for high-grade iron ore over the long term and also that Horsens is very competitive on price. Mitsui is the first company to contribute to the project's feasibility study. Carpentaria estimates the study will cost nearly $27 million and will continue to meet with other interested companies to seek more funding. It increases the stakes for those that want the product and there are still very many of those. And yes, of course, we'll be saying to them, now's the time, here's the model, um, please help us. The new mine is expected to generate around 1,200 jobs in construction and 500 jobs in steady state production. We're going to be in production for decades. Uh, that means we're going to be in town for decades and that means we want to be giving something back and also maximising the benefits. We look forward to getting as many of those jobs in the hands of Broken Hill uh, locals as we can. Patrick Roenke, Southern Cross News. The Port Augusta Council will conduct an extensive report into the town's iconic foreshore wharf. Assessments will be completed above and below water to better understand the structure's future. The Port Augusta wharf is the iconic heart of town, with a rich and dated marine history. But the bare bones of the wharf are starting to show their age. The council investigating how best to prolong its life. Detailed assessment plan is about bringing together some of the information we have and more so the information we need to actually ascertain the full integrity condition of, of the wharf itself. The wood is eroding and the uneven path to walk to the wharf's edge can be a safety hazard, much of it due to vandalism. So we obviously need to take measures to make sure it is safe. The $20,000 assessment will involve engineers on ground as well as divers to measure the health of the structure below the water surface. The recommendations of the report will better inform the council of their steps for its future. One of the things we've probably actually got in our advantage with the wharf is it is state heritage listed, which obviously opens up a lot of avenues for resources and in particularly in relation to grant funding as well. A similar detailed report was carried out late last year on the east side T jetty and estimated those restoration costs would be over a million dollars. 
If that assessment is anything to go by, repairing the much larger wharf is going to prove costly. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. Community groups in our region have the chance to share in up to 20 grand of Commonwealth funding. Round four of the Stronger Communities is open, with Rowan Ramsey encouraging locals to apply. Sporting and community groups are the backbone of regional centres, but many don't qualify for large government grants as they look for funds for local projects. $150,000 is now available in Grey through the fourth round of the Stronger Communities Fund. They're trying to support those that are actually trying to support us, I suppose, and, uh, and give them all the encouragement that we possibly can to keep them active and busy and engaged and recruiting new members. Grants of anywhere between two and a half and twenty thousand dollars are now available. They will be assessed by an independent committee of locals who will recommend projects to Mr. Ramsey. We sort of pre-vet them uh, and then give uh, the, the you know the required amount and a few more the uh, the nod to put in the full bid. So, Mr. Ramsey says previous funds have gone a long way to improving what's on offer in our local towns and cities. Bike groups around Melrose have had had pretty good dig on this program. You know, building new trails and. Uh, local SESs need a bit of extra equipment. And he expects his tray to be filled with applications. Uh, one of those programs that members are not going to let governments off the hook for. Um, that uh, we like dealing with it. Uh, we're getting good results. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Still to come tonight, locals urge to brush up on their dental health. And why a poor Lincoln woman is riding her bike from Darwin to her hometown. Most of us get our regular checkups at the doctor, but it's a different story when it comes to seeing the dentist, especially in rural areas. To mark Dental Health Week, medical professionals are hoping locals will brush up on their oral health. As children, dental hygiene is part of a regular routine, but as adults, that trend can slip. And the Australian Dental Association wants people to watch your mouth, a light-hearted theme of Dental Health Week with a serious message. We know that the recommended brushing of twice a day is only done by 51% people in Australia, half the population. Um, we know 40% of people never floss or clean in between their teeth. Adding to the list of alarming statistics is that 45% of adults don't get a regular checkup at the dentist. In rural areas, that rate is expected to be even higher. Some people wouldn't come for a regular checkup. You know, they'll generally come if they've only got a problem. Lack of time and the cost associated with dental work are common factors for avoiding the dentist. But could it be something more emotionally ingrained? A new study revealing 85% of Aussies have a genuine fear of the dentist. Maybe you've had a bad experience in the past, you know, for some dental procedure. Medical professionals are urging locals to make their teeth a priority and visit the dentist more regularly sharing a few tips to brush up on how to better take care of your teeth. Brush twice daily, ensure that you floss once a day. Important to eat a healthy and balanced diet, limit your sugar intake. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. A chronic disease will be the focus of an expo in Wyala later this month. It'll focus on lymphedema, which is caused by blockages in the lymphatic system. Side effects include swelling in the legs and hands, as well as pain, tiredness and thickened skin. There'll be a number of workshops along with free screenings from Professor Neil Pillar. I believe they cost several hundred dollars to have a screening and, and this is um, free. Um, he's bringing the machine up. It'll be held at the Westlands Hotel from the 24th of August until the 26th. A renowned pub in Port Pirie has wowed the judges at the Australian Hotels Association Awards, walking away as the winners of two categories. It's believed the pub's recent renos is what made it stand out from the rest. Sporties has cemented its place as one of the best regional taverns in South Australia. We were nominated for six categories. Um, and we ended up winning the best redeveloped country venue in South Australia and the best bar uh, presentation and experience in the country, South Australia. It's believed its recent transformation, which saw a house in the car park bulldozed, the bottle shop relocated and the tavern completely revamped inside and out, is what made it stand out from the others. The dining room was currently used to be the front bar and um, the front bar used to be the dining room and the pokies has remained the same. So. It's got quite, quite uh, obviously newer and much larger, 
with the bottle shop moving across the road now. The award also recognising the staff for their exceptional hospitality. We've got existing staff that have been here for a long time now, um, know our patrons and um, yeah, obviously a new venue has really uplifted them. And it feels really great to be recognised and all our hard work's paid off and it's great to have the new venue and we're all loving it and customers love it. It's hoped the local community will feel the flow on effects from the awards with sporties now recognised across the state. A massive achievement for us and the EDP group. Um, it's obviously a huge investment that they've made, um, not just here but in the region. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Highways across our region are said to be filled with hundreds of old model cars as this year's variety bash takes to the streets. The bash will pass through Jamestown on Sunday and finish in Port Lincoln next week. Celebrating its 30th year of Outback Mayhem to raise money for kids. Children who are sick, disadvantaged or disabled within South Australia. So all the money we raise stays in the state. An amazing thing to be a part of, just to see the smiles on the kids' faces when them and their families are granted with something. Um, Hundreds of crazy costumed crew and early model cars are set to hit our highways. 300 entrants this year and 69 of them are there will be, this will be their first time on the bash. Over the past 17 years, Jamestown bashes have raised over $300,000 for the children's charity. This year alone, they've raised around 65000 They say it's important for other bashes to stop and celebrate in small country towns to recognise all their hard work. All their fuel money, their meal money and all that, they're very passionate to make sure that money goes back into these small country towns. Jamestown is hosting a number of family friendly events on the day at the Bundalia Forest picnic ground. Also doing a public barbecue for the general public just to come down and support the event. The event kicks off in Adelaide on Saturday and will be travelling through Wallaroo, Jamestown and Hawker on the weekend before reaching the finishing line at Port Lincoln next week. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. A Port Lincoln woman is gearing up to take on the gruelling mission of riding her bike from Darwin to Port Lincoln. It's all in a bid to raise money and awareness for Beyond Blue and mental health. It will be an unbelievably arduous ride, but it's a vital mission to raise awareness about mental health. I'm just about to take off on a bike ride from Darwin, Northern Territory, all the way back here to Port Lincoln. Rebecca Colangelo's remarkable journey through the centre of Australia will take her 33 days to complete. As a paramedic for four years, she's seen firsthand the effects of anxiety and depression and also the potential for post-traumatic stress among emergency services staff. Obviously in the emergency and health services, uh, we see a lot, we do a lot um, and there is always the risk of PTSD. So. Um, anxiety, depression, all that sort of stuff. And by stopping at a number of ambulance stations on her travels, she hopes to ignite the conversation. It affects everyone and anyone, um, and I think we need to have more awareness out in the big wide world about what's going on. In One in five Australians experience a mental health condition in any given year, and Rebecca hopes to raise $10,000 for Beyond Blue to support their vital services. Our original goal was $5,000, well and truly gone over that so our next fundraising target is 10. I would love to meet 10. If you would like to donate and follow Rebecca's journey when she takes off from Darwin next month head to her Facebook page One Girl and Her Bike. Casey Trelaw, Southern Cross News. Stay with us after the break we'll have the weekend sport results. And it's looking like we could see some midweek sunshine. I'll have all the weather details soon. Welcome back to local sport now. And there were some tight games of netball around the Spencer Golf over the weekend. Patrick Reinke joins me now. And it was a close call for way back in Port Lincoln, Pat. Yeah, that's right, Abby. Way back went into their Round 12 clash against Imperial as the hot favourites. With 11 wins from 11 games to their name, it looked to be an easy Saturday for them. Imperial didn't lie down though, pushing the undefeated side across all four quarters. However, Wayback managed to survive the close contest to win by seven goals. Imperial now face a tough game against Boston this weekend after they downed St Mary's by 20. Boston is just behind Imperial on the ladder with fourth spot up for grabs. Wayback will also have a big game on Saturday. They take on Souths United who jumped to second place after thumping Wanilla Rangers. Some great games to watch right there. 
Heading over to Ireland now and Kiwi won the top of the table clash against Warriors and True Blue denied YCW their first win of the season, beating them by seven. In Port Augusta, Railways made it 13 straight victories this season after beating Vikings by 19. In the second game, Magpies won a nail-biter against St Joseph's. A fair bit of sport going on here in Broken Hill, starting with soccer and Jordan Cox continued his run of good form, scoring four goals as West down Celtic. It was a very close close game between St. Joe's and Alma. Steve Grillett, the only goal scorer, giving the Joeys the win. To Broken Hill Winter Tennis, where France beat Germany five sets 38 games to one set 26 games. Matthew Hamburg won all three of his sets as Argentina bested Brazil. And would you believe it, nothing could split Belgium and Spain, with both sides finishing the night on three sets 27. Final start tomorrow night. And how about this for an unwanted visitor on the field? The 14 or so emus currently living on Broken Hill's Lamb Oval didn't seem to care that the prelim final of the Outback Rugby League was being played there on Saturday. The Wilcannia Boomerangs put on a show for the Avian Spectators, downing the Broken Hill Saints 50-12. to They will meet the Menindee Yabbies in the grand final this weekend. Good luck to both teams. So Abby, plenty of sport happening around all districts. There certainly is. Thanks Pat. And time now for the weather with Amy. Thanks for that, Abby. Finer conditions across the region today. Port Augusta reaching a top of 17, while there were still some cloudy skies in Wyala. Checking the satellite now and cloud across the south with a cold front is continuing to bring showers, gusty winds and a few storms. Strong winds are extending to the north of the state, despite a high pressure system keeping conditions clear. If you're out on the waters tomorrow, northwesterly winds will shift southwesterly up to 20 knots, with seas reaching up to 2.5 metres. The early birds can catch sunrise at 7 past 7. Mixed conditions across the Spencer Gulf tomorrow, with some showers hanging around. A fine day forecast for Port Augusta and Wyala, tops of 19 and 20 degrees there. After a small window of fine conditions, showers are expected to settle in around Port Lincoln leading into the weekend. Saturday heading for 13 degrees. A similar run of weather for Cleve and Woodna. After a sunny 23 on Thursday, wet and windy conditions will return to Wyala. Friday maximum sitting in the 20s as well. Temperatures will drop in Port Augusta by Saturday with showers expected. And in Kadena, it looks like it'll be a wet weekend with a top of 13. A cooler Saturday in Port Perry also, reaching a high of 14 degrees. While Clare will see some sunshine midweek, the weekend will be cooler. Expect a top of 10 degrees there on Saturday. And in Broken Hill, winds picking up by Friday. So Abby, we're set to have a bit of a mixed bag of conditions in the coming few days. It sure looks that way. Thanks, Amy. And that's local news this Tuesday. Thanks for your company. Good night.